Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Hope you're all doing well. It's been a little bit since I've had new videos. If you follow me on Instagram, you've probably seen the reels that I try to put out a couple times a week. Just kind of show what's going on around the shop. As far as actually doing tech videos for YouTube, been really busy, so it hasn't really been a chance for me to do that. But today I got a opportunity to sit down. We're going to do some videos, get some tech back up on YouTube on our channel that you, the viewer, have asked for. Today's video is going to be about ITBs while using a Haltech Elite or Nexus. We're also going to do fuel model versus BVT versus cam position. I'm going to show how to do custom tables in the NSP software. Obviously, you could do this in ESP and other legacy versions, but NSP is the new software that Haltech has for the Elite and the Nexus, so that's what I'll be demonstrating. I think there's a bunch of good reasons to switch to the Nexus software. We'll talk about that in that video, however. And then the last one that we're going to talk about that will be out this month is do VE numbers really matter? I know that that's a subject that a lot of tuners debate on. You know, does it matter? Does your injector data matter? What, what really is truly important? So those are things we're going to talk about in the next couple of videos. Obviously, you've been staring at this picture. This is a J-Series. I can't remember the team that owned this car, but that's what 55 pounds of boost and a bad misfire looks like. Splits the block in half. That was definitely a bad day for somebody. So, getting back to the purpose of today's video, let's talk about ITBs and a Haltech Elite standalone. So, this particular Haltech was using the Elite 2500. It did have the NSP software on it. So, we're going to switch to that software here real fast. There, as you can see, we have a, a VE table. And if you look at the top up here, that is going to be our TPS in this particular case. We have RPM, we have our normal VE numbers. And currently I have a log in the playback, which you can see the numbers on the side. So as I was rolling into the RPM range I wanted to be in getting everything up to temp. You can see that I was six inches of vacuum. Normalized air load is 41%. Wide bands on track. Everything's working great. Escape duty cycle zero. And you can see that I'm, I'm cruising in this section right here, right in the middle. VE number, not too low, not too high. This particular one, it was bouncing between 52 and 62. So probably about right for 2000 RPM. This is an RB26, by the way. Uh, it is a built motor. I believe it had cams. The owner didn't know a whole lot about it. He had bought it from Arizona and brought it to us to have the flex fuel done and some cold start problems that the car had. Now, as I start to accelerate the engine, first thing you're going to notice is it starts ramping up to zero immediately. This is because ITBs do not have vacuum or very much a vacuum. Uh, typically, as soon as you tip in, give it 100% throttle, they're open. The runner's a couple inches long. There's just not really a whole lot going on there. Now, as we move up, we're going to see the boost starts to come up. Wide band starts to drop. But you can see right here, 100% throttle. Now, what I find really interesting is you can see there isn't a whole lot of variation in these numbers versus boost. Right now, we're about 3,000 RPM. We're about where we want to be for the wideband. Four pounds of boost. Now, we're going to end up into the 20s. And so if these numbers were off, we would have huge percentage difference here. And we're going to get into what's going on in peak torque as we move up. But 92.5 at four pounds. And these numbers are going to be pretty similar all the way through. And that's because the fuel model in the Haltech and a lot of standalones adds fuel 
versus manifold pressure in the background, something you don't necessarily have to worry about. Now, if you're on a Series 1 or a Series 2 AEM, you have to set those tables up. It's probably the one most common mistake done in an AEM, actually. But newer stuff like the Haltech, the Infinity, Motec, all those, it's all a background calculation. Anyway, so we're going to start accelerating. We're going to get 16 and a half pounds. Now, remember, we were 92 and a half before. Now we're only 96, but our boost is 12 pounds higher. So our numbers are actually staying pretty linear for that air fuel number for the 12.3. Because the boost comp, as AEM used to call it, uh, is working in that background. Now we're going we're gonna to come up here a little bit. We're going to get to peak torque and then switch to the dyno sheet. This car had a EFR 9174 on it, I believe, uh, or an 8374, something like that. Um, and it made peak torque right at 5,900. So you can see the numbers here. I'll back up just a little bit. 5,700 is 106.4. 6,000 is 106. Now when we switch to the dyno sheet, we see the car made 565, 440. It's very responsive. I wouldn't consider this to be a drag race type setup. It is a 092 twin scroll internal gate, but it is a very fun streetcar. Sometimes I think we lose sight of fun streetcars because I have the Explorer and I have diesel-like torque. I've really come to appreciate that while we can build drag cars and we have fun with the, the drag race power bands, there's so much more to be said for a fast, extremely responsive car on the street. But getting back to the subject, we see 5911, so, you know, almost 6,000. That's where peak torque is. And in the Haltech, that's exactly what we see at 100% throttle. That's right where that peak torque zone is. And it, it holds it for a little bit. Obviously, we know that the the power start or the torque starts to drop as the power goes up but these numbers seem to be pretty close now if i was being my normal critical self i would say this is probably six percent high i like to have ve about a hundred percent at peak torque realistically it can be 103 to 106 this isn't abnormal but we might be able to fudge the injector numbers a little bit to get this all to match up this particular car had id 1300s I didn't really think that that was necessary because we're not trying to do torque management. We're not trying to have an actual outputted number specific for this car. So it's close. And remember, there is a time and place to be nitpicky. But if you're within a certain range of error, one way or the other, this could be 110, this could be 12, 102, it's okay. We, we have flexibility. We don't have to be rigid. Now, if this number was 145, personally, I don't like the numbers that high. That tells me the injector data isn't fitting the rest of the fuel model. There are reasons. That'll be a video for another time. Now, as we move up, we're going to get to, I think, about 7,500 or so. And we're still in that 103 range. 11.6 air fuel. We're 100% duty cycle almost 97.7 78% injector duty so we've really managed to tap that combo out and when we come back we see that's what happened it made 565 at 7550 it it just really didn't have a whole lot left and in this case i would tell you that that's most likely going to be the turbine housing, not necessarily the compressor wheel, because it's small, but unlike most RBs on a big turbo, it's making really good torque at 4,000. EFR being titanium spools fast, so that's good. We make 300 foot-pounds at what, about 3,600, I think, something like that, 3,670. So a real fun street car. The, it is a blast to drive between shifts, it's snappy. And again, it's not going to be the fastest drag car it could be, but if you wanted something that's going to be fun on the street as far as circuit racing, something that's going to be, you know, fun in the twisties, maybe he takes it back east and goes to Tail of the Dragon, you know, this is going to be good for lots and lots of corners.
and in and out of throttle. And we can see here real quick, going back to how the fuel model on the ITBs worked. So we're 103.3, basically 23 pounds of boost. So that number's grown 11%. So, you know, maybe there's a, a little bit in the fuel model there that we could tweak and, and make work a little bit better. But we see that in the background, it did everything it wanted. The other thing is it's also an 11.6 air fuel versus a 12.3. I bet if this was a 12.3, that number, whoops, accidentally grabbed my gauge. That number would probably be the 93, 94 that we're seeing down here or, or similar. So being a little bit more picky about the air fuel, um, we can get those numbers to match up. So again, it's not necessarily the Haltech that is causing the problem. Just how we set it up, things aren't linear, so the numbers aren't going to be exactly linear. One thing to think about, though, that if you do want your numbers to look a certain way or you're concerned about it, you do need to make sure that all your data is the same. Because if it isn't, your numbers aren't ever going to look the same. Now, we're going to finish this up by switching over to the injector control just to show that realistically everything's the same. It might've had smaller injectors. Maybe this was ID 1050s. I don't know if you can see that. It says 1040, so that's pretty close. The uh, injector latency I did versus flex content. You can do a little bit of fine tuning and not have to do additional VE maps if you want. It's a trick that will be in the custom table uh, video uh, coming out later this month. And then the Injector phasing, in, injector firing angle, lots of different names for it, is versus vacuum and boost, and then RPM. You can see I didn't really do much with this one. When we get to the VVT video, you're going to see that you can definitely do a lot and affect how the, the car is going to react. Anyway, that about does it for this ITB video. The rest of the setup is exactly like what you'd be used to seeing. Because I don't have any NA ITB stuff to do, this is the best that we got as far as explaining how it works. But really, other than the fuel being versus throttle, there isn't any real differences. You can see we still have lots of resolution to fine tune. Everything in the background as far as throttle versus boost is being taken care of. It is... Uh, a very good system to use. And I really can't say enough about how much I like the Haltech. All the newer Haltech stuff is, is pretty tremendous. Anyway, guys, I hope you have fun. Look forward to the 2023 race season. Hope to see you guys all out at the track. Take care. If that content is something that you like, please consider giving me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, please consider doing so. Definitely leave comments for positive, negative, let, let me know where I can improve, what you guys want to see in the future. It just helps the channel and it helps get you the content that you want. If possibly you have a friend or community group that can benefit from content like this, please consider sharing it with them, Facebook, Instagram, wherever you want to go. Lastly, if you want notified as new content is added, simply click on the bell icon and YouTube will do that for you. Thanks again, guys. Take care.